And this is a uh, an Earthship house that I worked on long ago. This is one of the first systems I, well, not one of the first systems I put in, but it was way before the YouTube channel. And we've got some panels, and this is what happens when you transport panels out of the pallet. They start to get a little funky, but these ones are all right. So what we are doing here is we're gonna be doing an update on the system. The lead batteries died long ago. If you ever look at earth ships, they wanna put the battery on top. And that was a big mistake of the earth ship thing. There's a guy, and I'll point him out, but if you wanna read about earth ships and the design of earth ships, there's a lot of info on it. But uh, we've got a, uh, we're gonna add eight panels to the existing array and we're gonna add two lithium batteries. So there's Michael Reynolds' website, uh, Earthship Biotexture, and he's the guy that came up with the Earthships. There's a good movie called Garbage Warrior. Definitely watch if you're interested in that. Shout out to my man, Andy Hickman. He's the builder of this place, and he put his heart and soul into it. And even though he ended up selling it, he really built an awesome place, and I always love working here. And when it was being built, the guy was trying to start a business of building these houses. So he took Earthship plans and adapted them to building codes for North Georgia and I think it was all 50 states. And like most alternative building projects, it failed. But he built this really cool house and I had the opportunity. It's one of my early systems. I didn't mount the panels, but I ended up coming in and doing the battery system. And uh, he went ahead and put the rails on to add eight more panels, but he never got a chance to do it. So here we are years later, probably five years later, and uh, we're gonna be putting in some lithium batteries and adding eight 300 and something watt panels. So we're gonna add almost uh, 2,400 watts. We're gonna double the size of the solar array. This is Snappin' Rack's older profile. You guys have seen these in our early videos. But this base is just about as good as it was the day it was installed. There's some sealant. This is Snappin' Rack's older Series 100 roof mount rail. Sealant looks awesome. It's not yellowed at all. And that is one of the metal roof bases. Obviously, it's not leaking or he would know it because it's been up for five years. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the panels on. And we're going to go for it. We'll probably give them just a little torque check before we mount panels, but everything's good. And then once again, Johnny from the past left a piece of conduit for Johnny from the future. So i got to thank Johnny from the past there. So that's how I can get into my wiring. Here's some funky wiring, huh? Coming off of the panels over there. LB town. That's like a three-way LB pull. Then I got my conduit. This is back before I knew how to wait, run conduit. Wait, I still don't know how. And then hop down here. And there's the J box. Look at that. 90 or LB to an LB. It's okay though. And then boom. This was some very early electrical, but I did it. And there we have, that's where the PV's coming in. So I'm, all I gotta do is get from here to here and the pipes already ran. All right, so we've got our array all prepped for mounting panels. We just uh, got our wires down for, uh, I'm bringing two number 10 PV wires. I'm gonna actually put inline 15 amp fuses on these two uh, strings and positives, and I'm gonna combine them on the roof. I'm gonna feed them into a 30 amp breaker in the combiner box. And uh, we were able to get that wire. So you can see there's the PV wire hanging out. And guys, you don't have to go crazy if you're running PV wire on the roof because it's already rated for being in the sun. And it could actually run through, if it was supported and protected from damage, it could run across the roof um, however I wanted. It's, it's basically tray cable. But I've got it uh, <clears throat> got it right here converted onto fitting. I just got a PVC fitting to keep it from chafing. And I'm going to pack a little bit of 
electrical putty in there. So just so no bugs get in. And it'll be underneath the panels. So now we're gonna go ahead and mount the panels. And we're gonna head down into the mech room next. This is where the batteries were, but directly underneath is where our solar is located. So we're gonna head down there and I've got some uh, lithium batteries I'm gonna put on this system, on this peaceful earth ship. You ready, Antonio? I'll show you real quick. There's my dirty combiner box. Just gonna pop a 30 amp breaker in there and she's ready to go. These are 15 amp inline fuses by Shoals. These are some solar, solar farm stuff here. And then this is a uh, Staubly MC4 brand. That's actually by Shoals too, but it's got MC4s on it. And uh, this is the Y connector. So this is how we're gonna combine without a combiner for these two panels. This is kind of uh, solar farm style, but it's also Amish style. Amish do it a lot like this. So nothing wrong with doing it like this. All right guys, we are putting our panels up so quick. I almost forgot just to show you how we're clipping them in. Here's what we're doing. We're just doing two PV wire clips and then we're connecting them. We're going underneath the rail. So Antonio's taking the wire, he's running it around and popping it in the bottom of that rail. He's gonna pop in and then he's, we're, we get the wires dressed, sitting in the bottom of the rail. And then we just lay the panels down. How to dress your wires. So these are the snap and rack hidden in clamps. Snap and rack. And anyway, they pop into here and they actually bite on the panel frame underneath. So I'll slide it in and I'll show you what it does. So that little part goes up and over. And then it, so you can, you pull it over the, and the bottom part is going over the bottom lip of the panel. And you tighten it up. And that's what it looks like when it's on the panel. All right, so this is that magical moment when you turn on the breaker to a lithium battery bank and it starts really charging some batteries. So that's the first string of panels. All right, folks, so it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. You can see the sun is way over there. That's where the sun's at. <clears throat> and uh, so we're at nowhere near peak solar, but we're making about 2000 watts right now, which we're dumping into the battery. There's that new solar array we just put up. Those are 315 watt modules. So it's almost a little over 2400 watts. And uh, I'll take you inside and show you what is going on with the charge controller and the Magnum. All right, so we have the Magnum here. I've got the Magnum inverting right now. So it's only pulling about five amps, which is like 250 watts. And then we've got the solar bringing down 1700 watts. And then there's our arc batteries once again. They show you what they're taking in. Taking in 727 watts on the right. And they tell you what it is in volts and amps. And then if they're blinking, they're charging. If they're solid, they're discharging. And they're also telling you there's a count down there. It says three hours until it's full. So... This is the last batch of arcs I had. I had 25 of them come to me and I shipped out 25 to different customers on YouTube. So it's been a great battery for us and it's so compact. You know, it fits down in there. This is replacing a 400 amp hour lead acid battery bank that the guy was not into. So on these Magnums, a couple of settings. Want to go down through your settings uh, i advise everybody to use vdc connect if you're if you're grid tied but you're trying to save money with your magnum you want to connect and disconnect from the grid based on voltage um you want to go to your bmks and your bmk you want to make sure that's working sometimes those can be a little weird but this is your the magnum's battery monitoring kit and setup 
inverter setup, we want that low B LBCO setting, 47.8. That's what I've got. And I might bump it up to 48. Kind of got to see where the Magnum, what the Magnum thinks 47.8 is compared to the battery. Uh, AC end time, I'm not using that to control when the grid comes through. I'm not doing it based on time window. I'm doing it based on voltage. Or we are going to be using VDC Connect uh, because lithium batteries, they have really tight voltage. Uh, in their voltage is really tight in relation to discharge levels. So using these VDC numbers is what you want to use. Um, if the SOC seems to be working right with your Magnum, you know, the SOC is calculated by the BMK on the Magnum. So if that's working with your battery, then um, you can you could use this too, but I, I don't use that. Uh, next setting I use is on my charger settings. I'll leave that alone. Custom battery setting, max charge rate. So the Magnum charger is 6,000 watts or 60 amps at 54 volts. And the ARC batteries have a recommended charge rate of 75 amps. Max charge rate is 100 amps. So with two of them, I could well under that with the uh, Magnum charger. So I'm going to leave that at 100%. And then the um, absorb time, it's supposed to do 10 minutes with the ARCs. Um, and the final charge stage, you do silent so that you can get to the, get your rebulk setting. And then I also like to just kind of program some settings into the favorites menu. I've got your favorites menu programmed to show you F1. That's how many amps are going into the battery. That's how many amps of load you have times 240 volts. That's how much power this panel is pulling. Um, that's the state of charge of the battery. And this is, this is, may or may not, this is an old battery monitoring system and it, it was when lead acid batteries were prevalent. So it may or may not jive with, uh, what this says, but you need to go by what the batteries say because with lithium batteries, they know if they're charged. All right, and this is how many amps are going into the battery. So this is cool because 19.6 amps going into the battery. And then you look right there, you see that 9.68 and 9.65. So that's, that equals 19.6. And then um, this is how many amp hours you put into your battery in one day. These are all valuable pieces of information, but you really don't have to think about all that anymore. You can just come look and see what your percentage of your battery is. And this thing is, is accurate. It doesn't need any kind of external interaction or anything like that. It's gonna tell you how full the battery is. If it's blinking, it's charging. If it's solid, it's discharging. So you have 3.28 kW now on this roof. And I think there's close to 2000 watts this array's at a steeper pitch, so it'll make more power in the winter. This array's at a shallower pitch. It's going to make all its power during the summer. But they're still making uh, close to, I saw them making close to 2,000 watts when I turned it on at about 3 o'clock. These are Trina half-cut modules. That's why that, they, those panels have 60 cells, and these panels have 60 cells, but they're cut in half, so they're 120 cells. So aside from that cable, which I've got to get, I'm gonna come back, I'll bring my taller ladder that's not too tall, it's kind of dicey trying to get up there. This house is super cool. It's like 90 degrees in here. But um, the air is fresh, and I'm pretty sure the rainwater comes down and waters all this. But it's got all kinds of really cool features.